A simple and easy way to get more followers and likes on social media is to run a contest or giveaway. But beware, because these types of promotions can turn sideways if you don't follow best practices. So by the end of this video, you'll know the tools, the strategies, and the frameworks needed to run a successful contest on social media. Well, hey there, and welcome to Pro Church Tools, the show to help you share the message of Jesus while we navigate the biggest communication shift in 500 years. I'm your host, Alex Mills, joined as always by Brady Shearer. Alex, if you want to jumpstart social platform, because mm -hmm. it's brand new, or if you want to jumpstart a stagnant social platform that's kind of lost momentum. We've all been there. You can run a contest or a giveaway on social media. I always think that there are kind of two types of contests. There's, okay. there's the basic contest, Contest, sure. and then there's the advanced contest mm. slash giveaway. To, to give examples, a basic contest would be something simple where you could announce from stage, hey, we're going to give away a $25 gift card mm -hmm. to Frijoles, everyone's favorite Mexican restaurant in Niagara Falls. Of course, substitute that for your own local restaurant that everyone loves. All you need to do is like us on Facebook. So next week or in two weeks, we are going to randomly select one person that likes our Facebook page, and they will be given away that gift card. Perfect. Um, sneaker accounts on Instagram do this all the time. Mm -hmm. So we've got an upcoming shoe that's coming out. Uh, when you're watching this, it will have came out last week. It's the Travis Scott Cactus Jack Air Jordan 1s. Okay. Highly coveted. There's almost no chance that you can buy them. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons for that is because they are being given away almost exclusively through raffles. Right. Now, this is a bit different from a contest or giveaway. You don't win the shoe. You win the opportunity <laughs> to buy the shoe at its retail price. Right. What an opportunity. What a privilege. Wow, what a world we're living so, in. So, for instance, there's a Canadian a sneaker company. A, there's a Canadian streetwear sh uh, shop in Toronto called uh, Deadstock or Livestock. They, they trick Deadstock. Live, it's called Livestock, but their okay. website's deadstock.ca. Okay. And Deadstock is a reference to shoes that have never been worn. Anyway, sure. this is getting off track so quickly. <laughs> we do one sneakers and preachers, I preachers know. and sneakers yeah. episode. How can we squeeze sneakers into every episode? I mean... <laughs> we're doing it. <laughs> okay. So... What was I saying? <laughs> Talking about uh, the contest that they run. Right. So the way that they run it is a very basic contest where you have to follow their account on Instagram. Okay. You have to like the post about the shoe. And then you got to do that thing. Tag three friends. Classic. Which everyone loves. Don't yeah. you love when you get tagged in a contest? Yeah. So that's a really basic way of doing it. But there's more advanced ways of doing it as well. So you can use a tool like Gleam.io mm -hmm. and essentially run an advanced contest where... Uh, participants can earn entries based on actions that they fulfill. Right. So we've done this in the past where we've given away a Panasonic GH5, mm -hmm. for instance. And the way that Pro Church Nation can enter and get the most entries possible is to complete a number of different tasks. So you could follow us on Instagram. You could follow us on Facebook. Mm -hmm. You could follow us on Twitter. You could subscribe to our YouTube channel. You could subscribe to our email list. And they're all worth uh, another entry. Yeah, or maybe ones that you value most are sure. worth like three, mm -hmm. and then a like on Facebook is worth like one. And a tool like Gleam.io, which is a paid contest promotion platform, can enable you to do something like this. Uh, there are other entries that you could do. Gleam offers commenting on a blog post, mm -hmm. checking in oh, cool. on Facebook, which might be uh, useful for churches, mm -hmm. following on Snapchat, signing up for a newsletter, following on Twitter. Now, I do want to make a note here that Instagram and Facebook disallow you from using the API to track if someone completes an entry, such as okay. following your page on Facebook or following your account on Instagram. So there are workarounds for this. You can create a call to action in Gleam, an entry that's worth one point or three points, whatever you want to enumerate it. It essentially says, follow us on Instagram. Mm -hmm. And then what you do is you create a link, a button that says follow, and then you just link to your Instagram account. Right. And then most people will click follow because in their mind, if they don't click follow, do. they won't, won't earn that entry. But it's against Instagram's terms of service, at least at the time of this recording, to use their API to track someone following sure. you. And so if they clicked on that link, they're going to get that entry anyways. Exactly. Yeah. Now, they don't know that. Mm -hmm. And so most people will follow you, but it's not actually, you're not allowed to leverage the API yeah. for that purpose. And, and it, it also should be noted that uh, for these more advanced contests with more opportunities to do things to get entries, people are only going to be willing to do that increased work if the contest, if the prize is worth it. Right. A good point. So we run a contest like this, like you said, for an example, for... Uh, a camera, GH5, a $2,000 camera. So I'm willing to put in the work. There was a contest I entered last year that was for like $117,000 worth of video gear. 
like, I don't know how, I don't know. It, it was just a lot. And the things that I did to enter that contest were a lot. I realized like, oh, I'm willing to put in the work here to spend like 10 minutes entering for this contest and getting all these entries because the prize will be worth it. But if the prize is not a $2,000 camera, it's a $20 gift card. And you're asking people to, to like, you know, to 10 different things to get entries is not going to be that worth it for them. So that basic contest, the first example is more suited for something like, yeah, like follow, tag your friends, what have you. Uh, but these more advanced contest entry methods are should be held for bigger, more substantial prizes. And there's usually also a relation between how hard someone will work to enter a contest and, and their believability that they can win the contest. Yeah, that's true. And so one things you can do to stack the deck in your favor is to have more than one prize. Yeah. You can have like the grand prize and then you can have a secondary prize that there's like five of them. Yes. And then you can have a third prize that's like there's 20 of them. And so then people in their mind are like, you know, it's probably unlikely that I win this one, but the fact that they're giving away 25 individual prizes to yeah. individuals, that greatly increases my odds of winning. It's not the lottery. Sure. It, it, I have a more chance to win. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, you can also do this entry um, procedure where you can earn more entries. It's kind of like when right. you go to a sports game and they had the raffle, you know, it's like five for 10 or a hundred for 20. And you're like, well, right. I got to spend 20 <laughs> yes. and it's going to give me a hundred entries. That's yeah. not just one. I have so many entries mm -hmm. and you can do something similar with a, a platform like gleam.io. You don't just simply like a page and get one entry. You can do all of these things and you can get like 25 entries mm -hmm. and that increases an individual's believability, their faith that they can actually win the contest. Yeah. And when they actually believe they have a chance, they are so much more likely mm -hmm. to complete this. I have stopped liking these Instagram raffles of shoes. I did a bunch of them and I never won. And I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> this has 33,000 likes. Yeah. One in 33,000. Yeah, it's not very good odds. <laughs> I cannot tag my friends and upset them through a shoe tag <laughs> right. for a one in 33,000 yeah. chance. Yeah, it's That's not just it. not smart. Yeah. That's just bad data. Mm -hmm. So when should you use a contest? Mm -hmm. When you're starting a new social platform, so you have zero followers, yeah. let's say you're jumping on Instagram as a church for the first time, I love doing a contest, a giveaway then, because it can get you a nice increase of followers at the beginning. Mm -hmm. We've done that with YouTube when we launched our channel. Uh, we've done that with uh, Instagram, I believe, in the past as well. You can also do it when you are trying to revive something that's struggling. Yeah. The analogy I like to use with contests is, you know, you're pouring gasoline on a fire. It's not sure. a sustainable strategy. It should be used very intermittently mm -hmm. and rarely, but it is something that can help you, something struggling, yeah. revive it really quickly, get a big burst. Yeah. You can also do it if you're promoting a new ministry or an event that you're hosting. We just did this at our church. We're hosting a women's conference on Mother's Day weekend. So we ran some some Facebook ads. I think we put like 50 or 100 bucks behind some some Facebook ads in, a, you know, a 20 kilometer radius of our church, what have you. But that kind of feels like, you know, nameless faces. I don't know who these ads are getting delivered to. So we also decided to run a contest. We reached out to a local florist. The contest didn't cost us anything because we reached out to the local florist, asked them if they wanted to make a spring planter. They said, absolutely. They gave it to us. And then we were able to run this contest on Instagram, you know, say, hey, uh, didn't ask for a like, didn't ask for a follow because we didn't need follows. We were trying to generate um, awareness. And so we just said, hey, tag your friends uh, for a chance to win this spring planter. Who do you want to bring to Bloom Conference? And so these are real people who are tagging other real people likely in our community. And it was all for free. So even if you don't have that 50 or $100 budget for Facebook ads to increase awareness for an event or new ministry, you can reach out likely to a local restaurant or a local vendor, in most cases, they're going to be happy to give that to you because they're getting yeah. something out of the transaction as well, right? They're getting exposure. And you can generate awareness for whatever you're trying to push for free. So this is a really great opportunity for churches of, of any size with any budget. Yeah, the headline of this episode is using contests to get more followers and more likes, but you can use it also to just get more awareness. Yeah. It's a it's a useful tool when used sparingly. And I yes, need to emphasize it. that because this isn't something that you can use every month, every three months. We've done it maybe once a year, once every six months. We mm -hmm. haven't done it, I think, in almost 18 months at this point. And one of the reasons for that is that there is a potential downside. Consider this. Let's say you run a contest or giveaway that earns you 100 new followers. Mm -hmm. And let's say your church had 900 followers for clean math before that. So now you have 1,000 followers. But but now, 10% of your audience, where before it was 0%, ideally, 10% of your audience followed you 
not because they loved the content you right. were publishing on yeah. Instagram, but they followed you for the sole purpose of being eligible to win something. Sure. So once that contest is over, those followers, that 10% is considerably less likely to engage with your content yeah. on social because that's not why they followed you to begin with. The people I follow on social, I follow because I like their content. Mm -hmm. And so I'm likely to engage with it. And that shoe account is a great, great example of that because Livestock has about 200,000 followers okay. on social media, on Instagram. And at this time, I think that post for those Travis Scott AJ ones had like 40,000 likes. Yep. Huge engagement, you know, like four out of 40,000 out of 200,000 is huge. Yep. But if you go to their average posts, it's like closer to 500 likes. Right. And 500 likes on an account of 200,000 is like a 0. 0.3 engagement yeah. rate. That's Not really great. bad. My personal Instagram has about 17,000 followers and we get about 500 likes on average per post, yeah. which is great. It's like 3%. Like that's good for us. It's 10 times more engaged mm -hmm. than the Livestock Instagram. Why? Because they're always running these raffles for shoes. Yep. And it's great for generating big numbers and followers. And if your entire business model is built upon something like this, which a sneaker account is, yep. and it works because again, you're raffling the opportunity to buy. You're not raffling something exactly. away for yeah. free. It works. But you can create this increased quantity of followers that will decrease your overall quality of engagement. Mm -hmm. And it isn't just the 10%, let's say, of new followers you get. That can prob problematically trickle into your other followers. Mm -hmm. Because if suddenly your engagement rate drops, and it, it's going to drop fast because you're going to get a huge influx sure. of followers in a short time frame, the algorithms will notice that. It won't mm -hmm. go unnoticed. And so what, what they'll see is, wait a minute, this engagement has dropped. Maybe we should show less followers this church's content mm -hmm. and so now those junky followers have impacted the good ones yeah and i've seen this happen before with our our, our email list and with our youtube channel where we ran a contest and then at least from my perspective it looked like our overall engagement dropped not just percentage wise but volume wise mm. we had all these new followers and subscribers but we were getting less views per video or a lower click rate per email that we sent yeah. out and I had to work pretty aggressively to then prune that list and then to work through that because I'm, I'm very, very protective of our engagement rates on social because yeah. our entire company is built upon content. And so if you kind of spam those lists, you undermine everything that you've sure. done to accomplish that. And so I do just want to be very, very clear about the potential downsides. That's my experience. So you're saying that it's a risk worth taking, just not so often. I think it's worth doing maybe once a year. Right. Doing it when you have a new account because... You can't hurt an engagement rate of zero. Right. Yes. So if you're starting yeah, a new yeah, social it's platform. It's only up from there, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and if you leverage your existing church that is obviously liking your content already, sure. you know, when we do contests, what we don't do is like run Facebook ads to the world. We'll basically use our existing audience, like Pro Church Nation. So, so what we did when we said, okay, people on Facebook or people on our email list subscribe on YouTube. Mm -hmm they were likely to enjoy our YouTube content. The only reason they wouldn't is if maybe they weren't YouTube users in right. general, which can still create that downside that I just mentioned, but it's lesser to a degree than just some random person okay. like following you. Makes stuff, sense. Which is almost going to be a useless person, 100%. Yeah. Uh, final tips you want to mention, uh, make sure to announce and post the winner mm -hmm. of your contest. Uh, I remember we did that GH5 giveaway. And we had a, like, a, a, a considerable number of emails, yeah. maybe like a dozen that were like, are you actually going to give away this camera? Or are you just doing this for the yeah, followers? It's like, wait, what? Why do you assume <laughs> I'm such a bad person? <laughs> so like publicly announce it, yeah. publicly post it, because people do have this cynical nature. They just assume that a brand is trying to rip them off. Yeah. They're having to kind of give you value before you give them value. Yeah. And it's just people are cynical. And so you got to make sure that you kind of skirt that problem. When we ran that, that contest a couple weeks ago, we made sure to do three things. First, uh, create a new post with the winner announcement do a story that expires in 24 hours with the winner announcement, but also make sure you go and update the original contest post. Go back, hit that caption, say update winner, you know, put some red Smart. circles so it gets people's attention, update, contest close, congrats to whoever. And this is why using a tool like gleam.io is great because on the contest page, you can announce the winner there. Yeah. So if anyone goes to the contest page where they entered, exactly. rather than emailing you, they'll be like, oh, the winner was announced yeah. here. Perfect. I had a one in 33,000 chance. Makes sense. And I have learned my lesson. <laughs> yeah. Again, emphasizing that this is not a sustainable strategy. Mm -hmm. It should not be used on a recurring basis. Use it as one-offs, as kind of a, a special tool. Uh, also, 
it is worth mentioning the rules here. It, they change all the time. So sure. it's not really worth us discussing this in a content uh, platform where we cannot edit it, like right. a blog post. Yeah. But do check on the most recent rules and terms of service with Instagram and Facebook and all these mm -hmm. social platforms because these contests, as we have made note of, they get exploited, yeah. they get manipulated, and the social platforms will create new rules and limit their APIs to make sure that their users' experiences mm -hmm. are not being downgraded because of marketers trying to increase likes and follows cheaply. Two tools that we use, I've mentioned this multiple times, it's the one I recommend, gleam.io, G-L-E-A-M. Also, rafflecopter.com, like helicopter, but it's a raffle. It's a rafflecopter.com, I've heard good things about them, haven't used them personally, but they also have a reputable platform. Awesome. Anything else to mention? Oh, I wanted to talk about what to actually give away. Oh, that's great. I have no ideas. So I want <laughs> you to put your ideas in the comments. Yes. We obviously mentioned the gift card, uh -huh. which I think is always great, uh, but for churches specifically, if you've run a contest, is there something that you found was, was working for you? On the YouTube page, on ProChurchTools.com, put your answer in the comments mm -hmm. below, uh, because I always do struggle with coming up like with the idea of what to give away. Yeah, and, and we've done like with Pro Church Nation, we've done an iPad. You know, iPads are always a good idea because like they're a universally enjoyed tool. Sure, they cost a lot of money though, and they're not you know really personable or, or sorry yeah. personal to your audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it sometimes it lacks context. One thing I will say about giveaways, churches do this all the time. Like, don't give away something that's like obviously in your own self interest. So it's like <laughs> you're gonna get our. Worship record. You're getting a swag bag. You won't believe how many coffee mugs with our <laughs> logo you're going to get in your house. It's like, you need a pen. <laughs> There's a pen in here. <laughs> it's, a, it's a church mug just full of church pens. <laughs> I bet Would you, you want like to win this. stationary with our logo on it? First of all, who even uses paper? <laughs> What's stationary? Where do you want me to put this sticker? <laughs> Things that you have found useful for giving away, put them in the comments. Yeah. That'll do it for this episode of Pro Church Tools. We'll see you next time. Well, I was like, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> like the video, subscribe. <laughs> That's too late. Like the vi you are useless. <laughs> uh, and a like, fifty thousand likes. Okay. <laughs>